Hey, everybody. The question of the hour, and it's it's really no joke. Will the Chinese shoot down House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's plane if she makes good on her plans to visit Taiwan? Now, that is the latest threat from China, and although it comes this time not directly from the Chinese government, it did appear this week in a Chinese Communist Party-approved newspaper. Is it just more mere bluster and propaganda? Well, let's hope so. We might find out for sure before long, however, since Pelosi did leave for her tour of several Asian nations today on Friday without disclosing specifically whether she will land in Taiwan. And whether that occurs or not, today I want to point out the increasing and serious threat that China represents not just to the economic future of the United States, but also to our national security. And that is no joke. And it is occurring right under the nose of and possibly with the consent of the president of the United States. More and more, China is calling the shots. Consider this. Earlier this week, before Pelosi left for Asia, Biden was on a phone call lasting more than two hours with Chinese leader Xi, during which Biden was supposed to tell Xi that the U.S. remains committed to Taiwan. But following that call, the Chinese government quickly issued a warning to the U.S. regarding the planned visit of House Speaker Pelosi. Beijing's, uh, Beijing's foreign minister stated that, quote, those who play with fire will perish by it. It is hoped that the U.S. will be clear-eyed about this. And last week, the Chinese government, again, directly the Chinese government, warned that it would take, quote, forceful measures if Pelosi visited Taiwan. What? China threatening the U.S. with forceful measures and with fire if members of Congress dare to visit Taiwan. Now, keep in mind, Speaker Pelosi is second in line to ascend to the presidency should something happen to Biden. And what has been President Biden's response? Well, there's no word from the White House, at least so far, about what Biden said or did not say about Pelosi's planned visit during the phone call to Xi. But earlier this week, the president did say that the military told him that they don't think it would be a good idea for Pelosi to visit Taiwan at this time. So that is the position of the United States coming from the mouth of the president himself. Not a good idea. No pushback. China makes outrageous threats and the U.S. backs down. And what does this say about our future in a world where China is calling the shots? They are, in effect, already continuing to overrule the U.S. on many fronts with increasing arrogance and confidence. And why is that possible? It's simple. Because we have allowed them to gain tremendous economic and military strength with our money, the money we gave them by outsourcing our jobs and our technology. And that was allowed because big corporations and big money interests make tons of money by making things with cheap Chinese labor, then importing them into the U.S. where they are sold for huge markups. Now, you might ask, the politicians could have stopped it. Shouldn't they should have stopped it? They could have, but they did not. And why? And that's simple, too, because they're addicted to the campaign donations that they get from those same big money interests and corporations. And keep in mind, this is important, keep in mind, politicians on both sides of the aisle have their own side deals in one way or another going on with the Chinese. For instance, Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's wife, Elaine Chao, while serving as our transportation secretary under the Biden administration, tried to include her own family, which, by the way, owns a major shipping company, in meetings with Chinese officials. And, of course, the president himself has been engaged in private business deals with China and other governments, other foreigners, through his son, Hunter, who was arranging access to the old man while he was a sitting vice president under the Obama administration. China is a Frankenstein monster of their own creation to be used for their own benefit at the expense of the American public, at the expense of all of you out there.
Now, what beside the elite capture, as the Chinese like to put it, the elite capture of American politicians and big money interests makes China so confident that it can make its threats stick and with impunity. Consider the following. China now has the largest navy in the entire world with designs at the very least on dominating the South China Sea along with all the countries in that region. Its military is expanding mightily and steadily and now equipped reportedly with increasingly sophisticated and advanced weaponry, including, get this, including hypersonic missiles, which could conceivably wipe out U.S. warships, including our aircraft carriers. And to our north, Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau is cozying up to cheat. He recently allowed, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, he recently allowed the Chinese military to observe cold weather warfare, warfare training of Canadian troops on Canadian soil. Now, isn't that useful information for China to gain, just in case it might want to send, for some reason, its own military troops north of our border someday? And to our south, China is making more and more deals with South American countries, controlling them more and more financially and politically. And in the U.S. itself, China is buying up all kinds of businesses and farmland and other parcels. And interestingly enough, a number of those acres are near, guess what? U.S. military installations. And that brings us to the next threat. Chinese, listen, Chinese telecommunication equipment atop cell phone towers in our West and Midwest where, guess what? Where many of our missile silos are located. And what kind of threat does that represent? Well, that's the subject of my next podcast, which I hope you listen to very carefully to see what they've actually been doing behind our backs and under our noses. Music